So welcome to another Wrestle Designs how-to video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a timing belt on a 1.9 TDI PD engine. These are not for the, the 90s or the 110. This is only for the PD. So it covers, I think, the 100s, um, 115, 130, and the 150. In this engine also came in the Golf, the Polo, the Passat, the Skoda, the uh, Seats, and as well as Audis, A3s, A4s, and A6s, I think it was. And it started around 2000 up until 2006, I think, in some cars. Also, surprisingly, actually, I think this is pretty similar to the three-cylinder engines, the 1.4. It's not too far off the water pump and design because I think that engine is actually the same engine just with number four taken off the back. It's only a three-cylinder. So potentially, the timing belt should be pretty similar, actually, to the 1.4 TDI PD engines as well. All right, let's talk, let's get, let's get into it. So the first thing I've done is, as you can see on this engine here, it's actually on the floor. The timing belt snapped on this, so I thought, let me just show you guys actually how to refit it. I mean, taking it off on the car is, you know, it's a lot of work to do, but this is just the basics really on how to time it up and the best way about it. And also with it being on the floor, you can then clearly see what you need to do. Because showing you on the side of a car can be quite difficult really. Yes, you can show you the process, taking it off, taking it on, but here you'll actually see what is actually needed to do to time this up properly with the water pump and everything else. All right, let's get into this. Off. Okay, so this is what you're left with, obviously in the car with everything stripped off. So this is a Gates timing belt kit. It comes complete with all the bits you need, water pump as well. I like the ones with the plastic impeller than the metal ones, because if the bearing does go, it will actually seize the water pump and then the belt will jump. You'll have an issue with that. It comes with all the idler, the tensioner, and also all the fittings that you need. So as you can see, this, this one here, this double threaded one, this is quite important. As you can see, I've removed it already from the head here. So that's the first thing you need to put in, which is the tensioner. Uh, if you have this in the kit, I would still recommend you removing this and the way you remove it is the way I'm gonna show you guys how to fit it, which is basically you just lock two nuts together and it winds up. So as you can see, locked two 13s on. You just tighten them up against each other and it allows you then to when you need to. Don't forget you're screwing into alley. You don't need to go nuts with, you know, obviously you don't want it to fall out as well, but you don't want to over tighten it because then you will actually strip out the thread here in the head and then you are really buggered. Okay, so that's nipped up. And then to remove them, just literally. Let's see if I can do this one handed. There we go. All right, so we're moving on to the next bit, which is the water pump. It's really important, guys, that you actually clean with a wire brush in here as much as you can, because as you go to slide the water pump in with its seal, you could actually damage the seal, and then you still end up having a water leak coming down from the water pump. And you think, well, I've just fit a new water pump, it can't be that, whereas it's better to always clean this up as much as you can, so you can actually see metal. And this is the water pump. This is what I'm talking about here, that seal there is basically all that uh, keeps the water in or out, depending on which way you want to look at it. So it really, like I said, it's really important. So what I tend to use for this is a wire brush and a drill. You can get in there quite easily. When it's on the car, you're not going to be able to fit a drill like this in here. So just get some uh, emery cloth, you know, some uh, 120 grit paper maybe, and just kind of clean it up as much as you can in this area by hand. So hopefully you guys can see, you can see nice shiny metal there. So it's all clear, cleared off. And now it's just a case of very carefully pushing this into place. It only goes in one way, the water pump, which is with this facing towards the bulkhead or towards the exhaust, depending on what car you're doing it on. There you go, went in nice and smooth. Now just put the three bolts. Again, these are only M7s actually, not M6s. Just be careful, don't over tighten them. And also, I tend to put a little bit of Loctite on there because, like I said, I don't want to over tighten them. You're only screwing into Ellie and they're quite small. Also, I don't want them dropping off with the vibration. So a little bit of Loctite, it's better to be safe than sorry. When you're doing them up, make sure 
if you just nip them up so that it actually maybe if you haven't put it in square you don't pinch it again just nip them all up first and then tighten them all up. <clears throat> so moving along, next, now is gonna be putting the hydraulic part of the tensioner in. Uh, it only goes in one way. You've noticed it's got this little shape here. And if you look on the timing belt cover, there's a little shape in there. So what you need to do is literally slide this in like so. You need to put this in place for it to line up perfectly. Again, it takes these little odd uh, M7s, which again, I'm gonna put a bit of Loctite on to make sure I have no issues. Fit this on and then use the new nut that comes with the kit, which is a 15 mil nut. And just kind of just wind it on, uh, just a few teeth. Not too much because you're going to potentially need to move it to make your life a little bit easier to get the belt on because it's a very tight fit. And I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so next thing you need to do is make sure this bottom teeth, there's no debris or dust in here because then you will cause you an issue. If you can, do get like a little toothbrush or paintbrush and make sure there's no loose bits of old belt or something that's kind of around the bottom pulley. That's very, very important. Okay, we're all good there. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put the belt around the bottom pulley and loosely on here. We're not actually gonna fit it to anything because we need to put the bottom cover back on now because the timing mark is actually on the bottom cover for TDC. And then I'll show you what we need to do here at the top. Some belts will actually have an arrow on them. Um, others don't, but I always tend to like to have the writing facing me, not, not that way around. So the belt's kind of loosely just on, not even over the top. It's just so that I can get the cover on. And as you can see, there's like a little small indentation here, and that is TDC on this engine. So we're gonna put this cover on, and I'll show you where it lines up on the crank pulley. Okay, so on the bottom pulley, you've got four holes. You would have removed it, but just to show you guys again, they're not actually symmetrical. They're actually a certain sub pattern, so you can only get this on one way. So there's no way, the reason why they've done that is so that you can never get the timing mark mixed up. So you have to maybe try a few times before you line it up properly, which I've done already. So I know it goes around here. And just put these four bolts in. And again, I'll put, I won't put Loctite on these because that actually can be a bit of a pain to actually uh, remove afterwards if you do need to do timing belt again or for the next person behind you. Just make sure you tighten them up. I think uh, it's about 25 newton meters or something like that. It's not very much, uh, but yep. So torque these up if you have a torque wrench. If not, just do them with a medium sized ratchet and make sure that they're tight. So as you can see, hopefully there's a little notch there in the lower crank pulley and the notch is still there for the cover. So that's TDC. But now because the top half isn't at TDC, so that you don't then, as you try to turn this, actually hit the pistons. What I'm gonna do is, we're gonna go back maybe about 15 degrees or so, so that the piston isn't right at the top, it's further down to give some clearance for the valve so that you can actually get the cam at TDC. You have to wind it anti-clockwise, not too much around there, probably I would say it's quite good. And now we'll move our focus to the cam pulley. So hopefully you can see there the hole Whereas in the other ones, there is, they're blocked, but this one you can actually see through to the head. And that's where you put the pin through. So this is what the pin looks like. It's actually, I've measured it for you guys. It's actually a six mil. So you can use a six mil drill bit. The only issue with the six mil drill bit is a drill bit is very brittle. So if you do move this, it will snap. And then you have loads of shards of the drill bit actually broken. So maybe actually might be better if actually if you use a six mil bolt or six mil rod and it goes into there. So let me just put this in. Okay, so I had to move the cam a little bit to line it up perfectly, but as you can see, it goes all the way in and that's it. And you know, you're in the right place. Now, before you put the belt on, is actually loosen off these three 13s and I'll show you why. So I've loosened off 
the bolts and you can see the pulley moves freely but you've actually locked the cam in place so the cam actually hasn't moved but the pulley moves now there's two reasons why I do this one if you don't do this when you pull the tensioner the belt tightens up and the belt will actually even though this is in place by the time you pull it out it will move because the tensioner has then moved the belt so the timing will actually be not 100% spot on what you do is also behind here it's sloped it's like a cone coming you know uh, inwards so the reason why that is as well so that as you tighten it it obviously locks and it doesn't move so it's you know it locks by friction but also you need to do that because it actually then brings the, the pulley down because the belt is very very tight to go on if you don't put this on it's an absolute mission to try and get this belt on but also make sure because you can see it moves quite a bit from left to right when you actually time the belt up, make sure that you're trying to get it as close as you can into the middle, the middle pulleys or just kind of before the middle pulley so that when you tension it like so, and then when you tension it, it kind of goes this way. But we'll, I'll show you that in a minute. And it's just there. Let's see if it focuses yet. Okay, cool. So that's TDC. Now, always make sure when you're putting the belt on that you haven't moved this out the way. Always double check, triple check this mark. So now is the process of putting this on the belt. So now it's the process of putting the belt back on. And I'll show you guys why I've loosened this and what's involved in, in doing so. So if it's tight, what I've done is actually I've pulled the pulley out even more. Okay, and we're there where we want it to be now. As unfortunately, as you can see, I've put it too much at the end, so when it tensions it, it's not gonna give me enough adjustment. So I'm gonna have to take that off again and try and move this a tooth back so that I can get the timing, so I can get this in the middle of the slots. So move it around one tooth, there we go. Let's get this on again. Hopefully with no issues this time. There we go, it's in, and as you can see, we're much more in the middle now of where it should be. So, but before we do the tensioner, make sure you put the idler on, so it just it's a slide in there like that. Also fit the new bolt that came with the kit. And again, tighten this up. So now I'm gonna show you the reason why we've left this loose. As you can see, because you have to put the belt on potentially the other way around, as in not the leading, the leading edge, the back of it because of the tension and because of the tightness. The front is slack, the back is tight. So now when you pull this pin, it will tighten the belt up because obviously it's a pre-tensioner and this pulley will actually rotate slightly. So what you do is you pull the pin on the grenade. And as you can see, it's come up, it's moved here and the belt now is tense on this side and that Okay, so that's done, and you see this should actually still be free. There should be no tension on this, which there is. And now it's just tightening up this 15 on here. Just tighten that up. Like I said, double check that's free still, which it is. And then triple check that the timing mark is still there. And then we can pull this pin out. And now with your 19mm 12 point socket, rotate the engine around twice. There we have it, it rotated perfectly twice. Now, I put this middle cover on. I also like to turn the engine around to make sure the water pump's not actually touching on this plate somewhere, which it's not, or the belt rubbing anywhere. 
So that's got a clean bill of health. And that's it, we're almost done now. So we've literally just put the top half of the cover in, slide it in into these little notches that lock it into place. Then we can put the tensioner on and put the auxiliary bolt back Again, on. Again, before you fit the cover on, make sure there's nothing loose in there, make sure it's all clean, that there's no dust or debris that could fall into the belt and damage your timing belt. And then that's it, literally put the cover on. And that's it, timing belt all on. Next thing to do is we'll put the actual bracket that goes on here and then the tensioner and then the belt. All right guys, so there as you can see, put all the belt on and it's all done pretty easily. It was a lot easier obviously because it wasn't in the car. And the reason why I showed you this guys off the car so that you can actually see, because with the chassis leg here, I'm not gonna be able to film it in the same way and get into the same amount of detail to show you what's done to get the spot on timing. The timing will be out, it won't perform as well. Uh, also, the consumption won't be as good as well. The starting and stuff could be an issue. So it's always important to use that pin and to loosen those 13s here on the cam pulley. Well, thanks for watching. And for more how-to videos, the link is here. Thanks for watching, subscribe, click that notification bell and be safe.